everyone, it's Nancy with Soulfish, and David and I have been working on our garden for the last 60 days or so. It's been incredible, we've learned a lot. I wanted to show you where we started, where we are now, and then later I'll show you where we ended up, who knows, <laughs> we'll see. It's been a real learning experience, but I'm really glad you're here. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that button, be a part of our community. We really appreciate you supporting our work and spreading the message, being a part of this great community that we have going here. And so come on, I'll, I'll show you what we did in our desert garden. There we go, you'll get to see where we've come. So today we are planting our vegetable garden. We got plants a while ago and we've been kind of sustaining them in and out of our garage. And Today is planting day. It's still probably a week too cool, but we're afraid they're gonna die in the container zone and we can't really transplant them all. So today's the day. We're pretty excited about it. And this is the space we have. So this is gonna transform into an herb garden, a vegetable garden, and hopefully some fruit too, we'll see. We've never really grown in a desert garden before. We've done it in the, the um, Southeast in North Carolina. And, uh, and we had good success there, so we're hoping that what we've learned from people here will help us to grow a beautiful garden. So I'll show you the transformation. So it's day two of gardening. We got a lot done yesterday. We tilled all the soil. We amended it with compost and potting soil. And we got all these plants in. These wooden posts you see are just to hold up sheets to keep them warm at night because we're still kind of in that range of a little bit too cold for them but they weren't doing well in their little starter pots so we had to get them planted so david set up these little posts because he's totally ingenious so up top we got all of our kale going all the way across his kale and there's some arugula on the end and then i've got my herbs here which i have to finish up today i have some chamomile to go in and some fennel and we got our trees planted we have a pear and a plum and a pomegranate, lots of peas. And then over here is this amazing hybrid pear tree. It's an Asian pear. It grows four different kinds of pears, one on each branch, which I think is just incredible. And then over here, I'm gonna do my tomatoes today. I've got 13 plants that have to go in. Uh, it was a lot of work, I have to admit. I think it was more than I initially had thought and my lower back is feeling it. I'm pretty tired today but we're excited to get everything set up. And then I think I'm gonna do some starts. I'm gonna start some corn and do some, uh, maybe some beans and stuff. On the back row here, I'm definitely gonna plant some pea seeds today. And then I'll have to see if my beans are the hardy variety because the garden center said they can't go in now if they're not real hardy. So I may have to do those in starts too. And then in our backyard, I did these massive sunflowers, which are supposed to grow 12, up to 12 feet tall. And the head of the sunflowers is supposed to go like a foot wide, which is just incredible to me because I love sunflowers. So this is what we got done yesterday. So I'm pretty proud of us. Um, so I'll let you see everything once we're completely done. We've never had a garden this size and it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. I'm excited. And then we'll, we'll do our starts and put those in here later. So two months later and a lot has happened in our garden. It's really been wonderful for us since we've been at home to spend our time out here. It's been so enjoyable and such a great way to channel energy and create beautiful food. And so we put in this big bed in the middle. This was not here before. And another thing that's super noticeable is all these sunscreens we have up. You have to screen your plants from the sun in Arizona. It's just so intense here that they'll, they'll really burn up if you leave them out. The corn seems to really dig the sun, so for now I'm leaving them be. Uh, this is the corn that I did from starts. I did actually do it, and I had them in the garage for about a month, and then I planted them in here, and then I just threw in some other corn seeds because I had space, and those are doing well, so it got warm enough where I could just grow them from seed out here. And all these beautiful butterflies and bumblebees, they're not bumblebees, they're probably honeybees, they live here in these beds, you can see. Look at all the bees. So wonderful. Like when I garden, all the bees kick up and the, the butterflies are everywhere. And it's just, it really is just quite magical. 
and they never stain. They're just kind of collecting water and maybe there's some kind of sweet nectar or something in the soil that they love. These are my potatoes. I grew these from potatoes we had in our cabinet that had gotten little eyes on them and so I followed a YouTube video, best thing on earth to do. Followed a YouTube video, cut up the potatoes so they each had a couple of eyes, dried them out overnight and then planted them and I've got potatoes. So apparently when these get to be about four or five inches high, which they're close to being, I have to mound dirt on top of them and they'll just keep reaching for the sun, keep reaching and then eventually when they dry out, then you pull them out of the soil. So that'll be a while. And then on the other side, just starting to pop up are some other potatoes. Those I did from whole potatoes. I did not cut them up because then I watched another video and they said because of the desert, they need the moisture. So use whole potatoes. So I tried both and both worked. And then in here I have my carrots. You can see my little carrots sticking up. These were kind of cool. They came on like a a tape with seeds which is nice because the seeds are so tiny it's hard to space them then you have to constantly thin out your carrots which you can see here because I did these just from sprinkling seeds so the tape spaces out the seeds and then the tape dissolves which is nice and those are rainbow carrots they're purple and orange and yellow which will be exciting and then this is my herb garden so it's expanded quite a bit I ended up seeding and so you can see in the back i've got parsley back here and then this is my cilantro that i did from plants but then all oh, these ones down here are from seed and then i've got dill over there and in the back i have my mint and my catnip my echinacea those are all great for tea medicinal beautiful and then we have our thyme which is starting to flower so we got to trim it again and then i have thai basil which is not doing great I think it may be too dry, so I've tried giving them a ton of water. It's unbelievable how much water things need here. I mean, you think, yeah, sure, it's the desert, but I mean, saturate them several times a day. And then we planted this incredible sage around our garden. It is the most aromatic, beautiful sage I have ever smelled in my life. I don't, I have to put down below, I'll put a reference to what kind of sage it is because I don't remember right now, but it's the bomb. And then over here last week, I did seeds for cayenne peppers and chili peppers. So hopefully they will like this hot spot. And look at our trees. They're doing great. This is our plum, which is also a prune. Um, apparently there is a difference. Not all plums can be prunes. Had no idea. And then look at our pears. Look at these beauties. Look at that Asian pear love these trees and I also did some carrots in a bin this was the first one I did but then I decided to do them in a bed because I thought that's not nearly enough carrots and then this is pomfrey our pomegranate tree he was just twigs and sticks when we started out look at him he has just exploded and he did so well that we decided to get a couple more so we got this pomegranate tree that's Mary that's her name and here's all of my tomatoes. These were burning up in the sun, so we had to get them in the shade. We had to move them and cover them because it was crazy. And then over here we have Astrid. She's another pomegranate. This is Perry. He's also a sage. And we have Winkle on the other side. The color of these blooms is just magnificent. So the smell is beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. And this is Seymour. He's the original sage. So the guy from the garden center had Seymour on the truck and he had gotten damaged and so he didn't bring them to someone and I asked him if it was part of our order and he said no it's a damaged plant from someone else's and he said you want it? I said yeah I want it. Look at him. He's doing great. And this is Butter Baby. She's my butterfly bush. She was all twigs and dried out so we've started taking care of her and she's doing great so I'm hoping she'll flower soon. We'll see. And then this is Willow. Willow was just a bunch of twigs. And then we started watering her profusely. And look at her. Isn't she just gorgeous? She'll be a huge willow. We do get some beautiful willows out here. And then these are my cucumbers. I did some pickling cukes and then some smaller, regular cukes. Um, and these I did from seed. And within like four days, I kid you not, they were popping out of the ground. These we're going to have to cover up today because the leaves are starting to get fried. And they were doing great in the sun, but now it's, it's becoming too hot. And 
by the end of this week, it's going to be in the upper 90s, mid to upper 90s, and it's been in the 80s, so they won't be able to tolerate it. And this is my arugula. It went to flower, so I'm just letting it go, and I'll hopefully be able to get some seeds from it. This is my kale bed that I showed you when we started out. They've gotten really big. We've started harvesting some of the kale. It's absolutely delicious. And then running down the edge of the fence are my peas and my beans. So I planted these from starts. Some of them got burned up in the sun, but they came back, as I mentioned earlier. And then once I planted these in the garden, I decided there weren't enough. So I went back and planted seeds because initially I did do some seeds and they didn't take. Then I did the starts and then I came back and planted more seeds and they're doing great. So these are my original plants. You can see they're a little toasty from the sun. This is the seed. This is my little seed plant. So the seed ones are popping up and growing at a really fast rate. Look at this one. This is my, my pea, he's the big one. And then all along the back there are more beans. So I have lima beans, I have tricolor beans, like string beans, and then I have sweet peas. I'm very excited. And then these are my big kales. I had some issues with grasshoppers eating my kale. Look what they did, little boogers. I had a talking to with them. My family laughs at me because I can't harm them. They don't expect me to, but they know I love all nature. So I've been spraying the leaves with some Dr. Bronner's soap and water, and it seems to be helping. I also put eggshells down because they don't like to walk on things like that. So I haven't seen a lot of them lately. The lizards come in here too, and I think they eat a good bit. But you know, everybody's got to eat. Just hopefully they can find something other than my garden. So here's the cool thing. These are my onions. I saw online that you can cut the bottom of an onion. Uh, we use onion, onions all the time when we cook. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna take the bottom, like they said, put them in a glass of water. You let them root a little bit. They said in the video that I watched that you need to let the green shoots pop up, like you see here, before you plant them. But a lot of times the green sprouts don't come up and I think it's on the onions that are a little older, a little more you know, mature, a little more ripe. So I just let them get a few little roots on them and then I plant them and this is what has happened. So from one onion, you get three usually, sometimes just two, sometimes four, um, but they're doing so well. It's so exciting. And then you'll see here, I've got new ones that I just put in. So when you're in my kitchen, there's always glasses of onions on the counter because I'm constantly <laughs> rooting onions. It's become kind of my thing. And then over here are my peppers. So those are some sweet red peppers over there. I've got some little starts in the ground that seem to be doing okay. Those are more red peppers. And then I've got my Anaheim chilies here in the middle. I did some onions from seed there. They did not do well. So then I changed it to jalapenos uh, from starts. And some of them are doing okay, but they're just not doing great. This is my fennel. Look at that, going strong. You can eat the greens on top, but the bulbs are the crispy, delicious things that you can put in your salad. But these won't be ready for a while. So everything's kind of in that, you know, doing well, moving forward, but needs more time stage. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. You know, growing, growing in a desert is, it's not easy. You know, you gotta just kind of be willing to learn and try new things. And sometimes you're gonna fail and burn the leaves off your beans or over water or underwater. You just gotta be willing to try. When I started gardening, I just started with a pot on my, deck because I didn't have enough space in my yard and I put three tomato plants in a pot and within two months they were choking each other to death because they got so big I had no idea so you just got to learn you know you just got to be willing to try and make mistakes and and it's all part of the fun so this is a bed David built for me this is the most recent one and so last weekend I did spinach and I did purslane purslane is a it's a green like you can put in a salad, like a spring mix. It has kind of a lemony flavor to it. And then I have amaranth. Amaranth is like spinach, but it has a purple leaf. So trying that, never had it. Just trying new things. And then over by my tomatoes, I planted some red beets. I've never planted beets, so we'll see. And look at the, look at the butterflies. Look at this, this is what happens. They all just come up and it's like you walk through them and it's just, 
that's just heaven. So lastly, I'll show you my sunflowers. I had mentioned that I planted sunflowers. Well, actually my son, Noah, planted them for me and it was actually sprinkling snow when he planted them and I just wasn't sure if they were gonna make it, but they did. So this is the biggest one. Look at all these little guys. Look at all the little moths, little butterflies. A lot of lizards live over here, but this is my biggest sunflower so far. I don't know if these will get to 10, 12 feet high. I don't know if there's enough water and the soil is rich enough, but they're doing all right. So I'm just hoping they flower. I love sunflowers. They're like my favorite, favorite flower. Always have been. And so I'm hoping they do well. But this is my little, my little sunflower garden with all my <laughs> magical little insects. I'm so blessed. You know, we're so grateful to have this here. And I had, I had some irises here. I didn't plant them. I'm thinking the folks who lived here before us planted them. They just popped up. They're gone now, but gosh, were they beautiful. So unusual to have them here. And this is our property. Another thing we did over these two months of being home is we put up a barbed wire fence. And that was a big task, but not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The whole family pitched in. Our son and our daughter helped because they're teenagers, so it's nice. And uh, we put up this fence right here because we have horses on this property that our neighbors have four beautiful horses and they roam this land. There's, I mean, there's gotta be 50 acres here, maybe more, 75, 100, I don't know. It's a lot of acreage. We back up to the National Forest, but the part that's fenced in is easily 50 acres. And the horses run around and it's really beautiful, but they were stomping through our garden and eating up our plants and knocking down our bird feeder and we just couldn't have it anymore. So we fenced it in and it's been nice. And so that's it. Oh, and we transplanted some cacti as well. We found some on the ground and you can just stick them in the ground and they will root in like the easiest thing ever. So these guys have been doing well and uh, tons of flowers here, just incredible. We had a rainy winter, which led to a ton of beautiful flowers. They're kind of dying out now because it's gotten so hot. There were bright oranges and bright yellows and pinks and purples and colors you would not expect to see in a garden. Oh, here's a little lizard friend. These came up too. These look like weeds. They still might be, but they have these lovely pinkish red flowers on them. So that's, that's what the desert is. It's like this amazingly beautiful place. And you can see kind of beyond our fence line over here, some of the flowers. And I'll, I have some photos of the flowers. I'll put them at the end, some stills so you can see. It's just terrific. So glad you could be here with us. Glad to have you as part of our community and share with you what we've been up to. If you haven't subscribed already, we hope you will. We want you to be a part of our community and help spread the message and share the love. So hope you all are well. Enjoy this day and I will see you soon.